Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and I've got a detailed forecast update coming your way on the severe thunderstorm situation through southeast Queensland and northeastern New South Wales tomorrow and Monday. We'll also touch on some of the strongest storms developing on across the New South Wales central coast and a little bit of a brief update on the rainfall situation across parts of northern Australia, particularly for northern Queensland, as a low pressure system is forecast to ramp up sometime around Christmas time. Let's get stuck straight into those thunderstorms through southeastern Queensland. We are going to be talking about a bit of an elevated severe thunderstorm threat tomorrow afternoon and evening. However, the forecast for Queensland at least is a little bit more of the uh, on the uncertain side as we are going to be seeing a lot of high cloud coverage stream in through tomorrow morning and into tomorrow afternoon and into the early hours of tomorrow afternoon, which will really throttle back some of the severe thunderstorm potential through southeastern Queensland. That still leaves us with a decent chunk of the northeastern New South Wales coastline towards the north of Grafton up to Byron and Lismore, uh, specifically where powerful long-tracked supercell thunderstorms are going to be a possibility tomorrow afternoon afternoon and evening, and I definitely expect some powerful thunderstorm activity to occur here, which may eventually cross over into southeastern Queensland around the Gold Coast and into parts of the Gold Coast hinterland and the Scenic Rim, where some strong storm activity may be possible later tomorrow evening. We could also see one or two strong thunderstorms into the Wyvernhoe outlook, but again, highly dependent on the movement and development of high cloud coverage, which at this point in time is going to be looking quite problematic for these thunderstorms, particularly into the early hours of tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon. You can see a lot of high cloud coverage streaming through southeastern Queensland between 90 to 100 percent through Brisbane and the Gold Coast and this is just too much high cloud coverage in the early morning hours to really get these thunderstorms off the ground. The high cloud coverage does linger for southeastern Queensland but it does clear off a little bit quicker for the northeast of New South Wales and by the time we get a bit of a sea breeze change as that dry line moves closer to the coastline by around 4 o'clock local time, some strong thunderstorms that should be getting themselves going around the Lismore area. That's really obvious on the convective uh, forecast modelling here from the Axis convective forecast in the Brisbane sector. You can see those thunderstorms get themselves ramping up after about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, with the stronger thunderstorms expected from about 5 o'clock onwards north of Grafton and outside of Lismore inland to Urbanville and Tenterfield, with the possibility of one or two strong thunderstorms as well into parts of the Wyvernhoe, Outlook, Lockyer Valley and parts of the South Burnett forecast district up to Gympie and Kingaroy as well over towards southeastern Queensland. But the lion's share of the powerful thunderstorms will be in this part of New South Wales here. And as you can see playing this forward, that some strong thunderstorms are definitely a possibility. These thunderstorms, if they do make it to Queensland, they're going to be arriving at about seven or eight o'clock into the evening. So they're likely to be upscaled by the time they roll into the Gold Coast hinterland and the Gold Coast area in general. And what upscaled thunderstorms are is the remnants of those supercell thunderstorms or those multicellular thunderstorms earlier that have turned into lines of heavy rainfall and damaging wind gusts pushing through into the Gold Coast area. This is likely to bring expansive lightning activity as well through parts of southeast Queensland, specifically around the Gold Coast. We could be seeing some very decent lightning activity uh, and inland out into the Gold Coast hinterland, the Springbrook National Park, some decent lightning activity is most certainly a possibility. And that is what is being shown by major forecast models right now. Lots and lots of lightning through parts of northeastern New South Wales and southeastern Queensland. Now the forecast for tomorrow is, as mentioned, highly dependent on high cloud coverage moving through into southeastern Queensland. The conditions are right for thunderstorms. We've got good convective available potential energy tomorrow afternoon out to tomorrow evening. Good dew points as well through southeastern Queensland. In fact, briefly, they're going to be tickling on 22, even 23 degrees uh, into the northeast of New South Wales tomorrow afternoon and evening, and that's going to be more than enough to get powerful severe thunderstorms off the ground. There's good wind shear. Everything is going ahead, looking like we are going to be seeing some long track supercells, particularly over into the northeast of New South Wales. And I would just like to say that there is a significant risk of some strong thunderstorm activity through here, particularly towards the north of Grafton up into Lismore, and then inland towards Urbanville, and then up to the Queensland New South Wales border, where that risk then does drop off as you get further towards the north. Definitely a period that I'm going to be monitoring quite closely and of course if dangerous severe thunderstorms do develop and severe thunderstorms move into southeastern Queensland I will run some live coverage as well so make sure you are tuned in subscribed and following along for that. Monday is also an interesting day on the severe thunderstorm front, uh, and I'm going to start this forecast for Monday off with convective available potential energy, which is our instability in the atmosphere. Have a look at what we're talking about on Monday. These numbers are through the roof. In fact, they're pretty nuts throughout much of southeastern Queensland. Numbers here in the Brisbane area pushing up into the 2000s. In fact, getting close to 3000 as we get out towards the afternoon hours. And if you've got an eagle eye here, you'll see winds coming out of the southeast, and then these winds here meeting up out of the northeast, and that's going to converge along a sea breeze front that's going to be pushing through 
through now. If you've been watching the thunderstorms over the last couple of weeks, you'll think back to Monday, November 24th, where we had that sea breeze change come through, and then that sparked a whopper superstorm, basically, that rolled up from the Gold Coast into the Brisbane area, dropping 14 centimetre hailstones and smashing its way all the way up to Mackay. That was an intense storm formed by pretty much identical conditions, uh, and you can see good convective available potential energy values, really good humidity as well, excellent dew point values across southeastern Queensland, that dry line right onto the coastline. So why aren't we expecting whopper severe thunderstorms on Monday? It is because wind shear. Wind shear is a key aspect for thunderstorm forecasts. It's something that gets supercell thunderstorms off the ground, but you can see 400 HPA winds, which is where our bulk shear estimates come from, uh, a big high pressure system just offshore from the southeast Queensland coastline. And you can see wind shear values between five to 10 knots through Brisbane and the Gold Coast, increasing to about 15 to 20 knots into the northeast of New South Wales. So whilst one or two strong thunderstorms are possible into the northeast of New South Wales, there's just not enough wind shear across the southeast Queensland coastline where this sea breeze line is going to be moving through. And that's not going to be enough to get thunderstorms off the ground in any significant capacity at all. So we can breathe that sigh of relief unless things change dramatically on Monday. There's really such a limited chance right now that widespread severe thunderstorm activity through southeast Queensland is going to become a problem, which is very good news indeed, because if we just pull this back down to surface level winds and wind gusts, that sea breeze line, that contrast in humidity and temperatures coming in from the south, that is very, very potent. This is an incredibly potent trigger that could set off some whopper severe thunderstorms, some storms similar to what we saw on Monday the 24th of November. So we're just very thankful that that is not a setup that we're going to be worried about because wind shear is just uh, to be frank, quite disappointing through southeast Queensland. Not enough to get those severe thunderstorms off the ground in any significant capacity. We've had a few showers throughout the course of today and continuing throughout the course of today, we will continue to see a few more shower activity through parts of the Sunshine Coast into the North Burnett Forecast District. We've got lots of thunderstorm and shower activity out towards central New South Wales and parts of southwestern Queensland. Some solid thunderstorms now get themselves rolling towards the northwest of Windora outside of Birdsville. And actually, if we do just flick on to the temperature observations here, it is very, very warm over in this part of Queensland. No observations are currently or as of now, but we can see in this red circle ground temperatures are pushing into the four, uh, high 40s. So very, very warm around Bodori and Birdsville as we would expect for this time of the year. And this creating a nice variety of thunderstorms out here. We're getting a lot of these outback thunderstorms with those high bases and damaging wind gusts. And then we're getting a more kind of high precipitation squall line mode of thunderstorms here into this part of New South Wales. And if I flick on the lightning here, you can see that there is an awful, or an awful lot of lightning in some of these thunderstorms. It just doesn't want to show up on this imagery here, but there is a lot of lightning into the northern north central parts of New South Wales, including a couple of strong thunderstorms as well towards the north of Richmond outside of Sydney, about an hour outside of Sydney. So New South Wales has got a good variety of thunderstorm activity today as well. It's quite an exciting day for them. And this is where our high cloud coverage is going to be coming from because we're seeing a lot of these thunderstorms are going to be upscaling later tonight like they're doing right now in New South Wales. And that pushes out a lot of high cloud coverage ahead of it. Uh, and that's going to move in towards southeastern in Queensland into the early hours of tomorrow and really throttle back our thunderstorm potential, at least for the Queensland side of things. So just to recap on Sunday and Monday's storm forecast or storm prospects through southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales, the greatest chance is, of course, into the northeast of New South Wales. We're not riding off storms right now into southeastern Queensland. The forecast can and probably will change, and it may favour some strong thunderstorm activity through southeast Queensland, Brisbane, and the Gold Coast. But it's looking a lot less likely than what it was a couple of days ago and a lot less likely than those severe thunderstorms on that severe thunderstorm prospect into the northeast of New South Wales. Still monitor the situation and tomorrow monitor the radar frames very, very closely, particularly after about three o'clock through southeastern Queensland and right out to about 10 o'clock. And as always, if severe thunderstorms develop in the vicinity of Brisbane or the Gold Coast, I will be running live coverage to keep the masses informed. Now, looking a bit more long range, we are, well, there's a lot of interest now in a bit of a wet period that's going to be beginning to build after about uh, December 20th or so, and that's likely to run out through Christmas, out towards Boxing Day, and even as far out as the new year. And there's increasing signals that are now that a weak tropical low pressure system may develop into the Gulf of Carpentaria, tracking down into the channel country of, uh, the, uh, the Gulf country rather, of northwestern Queensland, and dumping a boatload of rainfall at the time, uh, well, at the same time as well. It'll also likely funnel in some decent rainfall 
accumulations and moisture from the Coral Sea as well, translating to some significant rainfall accumulations through parts of the North Queensland coastline and even into the interior parts of Northern Queensland as well. But I would just like to say before I take a deep dive into what's driving this rainfall that this is a very generalized forecast right now. Things are going to change. There's a lot of discrepancies between major forecast models right now. One thing is becoming a little bit clearer though, Southeast Queensland is increasingly more likely to miss out on this rainfall and unless this low pressure system does take a bit more of a dive towards the south or we see moisture uh, sweep down even further from the south into the Coral Sea, then that's really going to elevate the rainfall through Southeast Queensland, which right now is not looking overly likely at this point in time. One factor that's very important to remember when we're talking about rainfall forecasts like this is sea temperatures and they are on the boil through the Coral Sea, 28 pushing 29 up to the Queensland coastline, tickling 30 degrees in one or two spots and then into the Gulf of Carpentaria, orders of magnitude warmer, 31 pushing 32 in one or two locations. That means whatever low pressure system does develop into the Gulf of Carpentaria is going to be very, very moisture heavy. It's going to bring a lot of moisture laden winds into northern Queensland and that likely also means that the rainfall accumulation forecast, which we're looking at right now, is also very much on the conservative side and we've got some pretty big numbers already outside of Burketown here. Falls approaching 500 millimetres over just this seven day period after December 20th and keep in mind the bulk of that is going to fall in a very short period of time as well. So there is a risk of some torrential rainfall into the northwestern channel country, uh, the Gulf country rather of uh, northern Queensland but apart from that the risk of torrential tropical rainfall is not making itself too apparent at this point in time. I would just like to say though for the Cape York Peninsula it also looks like you're a little bit more likely to miss out on this rainfall. The Casper Coast is about as far north as where the heaviest falls are expected but again highly dependent on the development and movement of this tropical area of low pressure. If it does slide over towards the Torres Islands and slides down into the Coral Sea which is very unlikely at this point in time that will bring a lot of rainfall to parts of the Coral Sea facing uh, Cape uh, York Peninsula coastline However, if it takes the more likely track, which is through the Arafura Sea and then into the Gulf of Carpentaria, whilst it's not likely to get to tropical cyclone status at this point in time, it still could dump some pretty incredible rainfall accumulations through the northern Queensland or the northwestern Queensland coastline into the very remote parts of the Ca Gulf of Ca uh, Carpentaria. Getting all of my Queensland names very much muddled up in this forecast update, so I do apologise in advance for that. The risk of torrential rainfall through central Queensland is pretty minimal right now because we are going to be seeing some moisture fitting in from the uh, Coral Sea into the Capricornia coastline. If this low pressure system does make it uh, manage to make it far enough south, we could be talking about some serious rainfall accumulations around Rockhampton and Mackay between the 22nd out to the 25th of December, Christmas Day. But it's not a factor in the forecast that's got too much support behind it right now. And it's definitely something that I would like to say, take with a hefty pinch of salt, considering the forecast is still very uncertain. Forecast models do a pretty bad job at taking into, a, uh, into account sea temperatures through the Coral Sea, particularly in rainfall events like this uh, and what that can mean for the North Queensland coastline. Typically when we've got sea temperatures above average, we obviously see much more elevated rainfall accumulations and you can see that we've got some very warm sea temperatures, particularly through the Cape York Peninsula coastline, but even down into the Capricornia coastline and making it as far south as the Ca uh, Fraser Coast, we've got sea temperatures here, 27 pushing 28 degrees in one or two spots. And what that means is that these waters can allow allow for much more evaporation, they can hold a lot more moisture in the atmosphere, uh, and that will eventually be unleashed across Queensland or the nearest land area as rainfall and torrential rainfall at that. So sea temperatures are quite concerning, and that's why I'm rather bullish in my rainfall forecast, particularly because this is quite a far out event right now, it's sort of on our long range forecast instead of our short or our medium range forecast, where things are a lot more certain. But I would just like to wrap it all up and say that there are some discrepancies between forecast models, some saying it's going to be purely North Queensland, others saying that it's going to be pretty widespread. My my best guess right now is that it is going to be something a little bit more like the Eastern Blue forecast, but you don't need to be making preparations or panic buying right now. Of course, it goes without saying. Just watch this situation closely and we'll have some definitive answers by Wednesday or Thursday of next week. That is going to do it though for today's weather forecast update. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, then please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. I'm going to be doing some live coverage, hopefully tomorrow if severe thunderstorms do develop. It'd be nice to get back on the air tracking these storms live. I do love presenting the live coverage. So if you do like it as well, then make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, to get the first notification out there. Make sure you go and check out the second second channel as well. I'll have more information on the tropical cyclone situation over there throughout the course of this weekend and into early next week. But apart from that, that's going to do it for me today. A uh, special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.